Proper inspection and maintenance extends the life of fuel oil tanks and reduces the number and severity of oil spills. Keeping oil in the tank where it belongs is good for everyone. From a selfish perspective, tank inspections make all of our jobs easier. After all, nobody enjoys cleaning up after an oil leak. By regularly inspecting tanks and correcting minor problems before they lead to major headaches, we can prevent catastrophic tank failures, eliminate the need for many emergency service calls, keep oil heat customers happier, and protect our environment. So, what really constitutes proper tank inspection and maintenance? The answer depends on the type of tank and its location. This video will demonstrate proper inspection procedures for the most common types of tanks and installations you're likely to encounter. There are three different types of inspections that Nora recommends for fuel oil storage tanks. The first is the initial inspection that should be performed before delivery is made to a newly installed tank or to any tank belonging to a new customer. The purpose of this inspection is to be sure that the tank is in good shape and can be safely filled with little or no risk of spillage. This is also an important opportunity to look over the rest of the oil heat system to make sure the customer's equipment is up to date and capable of proper and efficient operation. This category includes all new customers' tanks, regardless of how long they've been in use. This initial inspection is especially important because customers often ignore recommendations for tank upgrades and simply keep calling until they find a company willing to deliver to their bad tank. Don't be that company. It's just as critical to inspect newly installed tanks to be sure that the installation meets applicable codes and most important to be sure that the installation is complete. We often hear about spills that occur because of a contractor forgetting to install the oil gauge, oil line, tank bottom valve, or other component. The second type of recommended assessment is the routine inspection that should be performed during a scheduled preventive maintenance visit or service call. This verifies that a tank that has passed the initial inspection can still be safely filled. Typically, the service technician who performs the routine inspection can repair any minor problems discovered. The third type of inspection, the pre-delivery inspection, is a brief visual check that should be completed each time an oil delivery is made. To make the critical job of conducting these three kinds of inspections easier and more precise, sample checklists of recommended inspection procedures are available in Nora's publication, Heating Oil Storage Tanks, Guide for Quality Installation and Maintenance. The initial inspection is the most comprehensive of the three types recommended by Nora. It is typically performed by a sales representative, service technician, or other qualified oil heat professional before a delivery is made to a new tank or to a new customer. Before starting the inspection, the customer should be asked about any out-of-service tanks on the property. If there are any, it's critical to verify that they have been properly abandoned and cannot be accidentally filled. Let's examine the process for an in-ground or buried tank first. The inspector starts by gathering some general information from the customer, such as the tank's age, type, and size. The customer may or may not know this information. If they do, it's noted on the form. The inspector should examine the fill location of the tank to be serviced and write an accurate description of the location so the oil driver will easily find the correct fill. The area around the fill must be carefully examined for any indication of oil spills 
such as dead grass, dead bushes, and so forth. If there is any such evidence, it's important to note it on the form. The inspector should also make sure that the fill and vent are positioned to avoid a buildup of water or snow to prevent water from entering the tank. Next, the fill cap should be checked to be sure it's in good shape and properly tagged. Plain caps that don't specify what they are connected to should be avoided. These can be connected to wells, septic systems, and other places where we definitely do not want to pump oil. Then the fill pipe itself must be examined to verify that it's properly sized, in good shape, and made of the proper material. It's important to remember that neither copper nor PVC pipe is acceptable for fill or vent piping. It should also be verified that the fill terminates at least two feet from windows, doors, or other openings to a building. Next, the current level of oil in the tank and the presence of water must be checked. Water finding paste is applied to a tank measuring stick, which is inserted into the tank until it reaches the bottom. After one full minute, the stick is removed and the oil level and the depth of any water, as indicated by the paste, must be noted. Turning to the vent pipe, its size, condition, and location should be noted. The vent pipe should terminate higher than the fill pipe and be visible from the fill. Like the fill, the vent should terminate at least two feet from windows, doors, or other openings. Additionally, it should be at least five feet from any air inlets or flue gas outlets of any appliances. Remove the vent cap, verify that it's in good condition, and check that the mesh is in place to prevent insects from entering and building a nest. This completes the inspection at the tank. Check that everything is secured and back in its place before proceeding inside to continue the inspection. As we do every time we enter a home, the inspector should carefully check his shoes to ensure that he's not tracking in any dirt. Proceeding directly to the place where the oil lines enter the building, the following items should be checked. Verify the size of the oil line, typically 3 8 or 1 half inch OD pipe, and note it on the inspection form. Check that the oil lines are made of approved material, such as copper or steel pipe, and that they are connected with the proper fittings. Copper pipe should be connected with flare fittings. Compression fittings should not be used. Steel pipe should be connected with malleable fittings. Cast iron fittings, which are used with steam systems, can be easily broken and must not be used when piping oil tanks. Check for a working supply line shutoff valve at the wall and make sure that any buried piping is protected from corrosion. Note on the form if it's a one-pipe system with one oil line from the tank or a two-pipe system with a return line connected to the tank. Check to see if an oil safety valve is in place and if so, that it's installed according to the manufacturer's instructions. Make sure that the oil lines are supported and properly connected from the entry point to the burner. Verify that there's a properly installed oil filter on the system and that fusible valves are properly located. Check that any other accessories that are part of the oil delivery system are properly installed and ensure there are no visible leaks in any part of the system from the entry point to the burner. The procedure for above ground tanks differs somewhat from that for buried tanks. Since we can see above ground tanks, we are normally able to perform a more comprehensive inspection. 
Whether it's an indoor or outdoor above ground tank, the inspector again starts by gathering some general information from the customer. Pipe size and required clearances from building openings are the same for the fill and vent pipes on these tanks as they are for those of buried tanks. Check for evidence of spills and verify that the fill and vent pipes and caps are in good shape and positioned properly. Moving to the tank itself, carefully check for signs of leakage. Check the legs or supports. Verify that the tank is at least 6 inches off the ground. Check the condition of the floor, or for an outdoor tank, the pad or foundation. Check that a tank gauge is installed and functions correctly. Measure the level of oil in the tank to verify the gauge reading and check for water. If the gauge or a plug is removed, it should be coated with an approved pipe joint compound and properly reconnected. Make sure any unused openings are properly plugged. Check for evidence of excessive external corrosion. And verify that the tank is at least 5 feet away from the burner or any source of fire or flame. Make sure the fill and vent pipes are pitched toward the tank to prevent oil from being trapped. Also check that a vent alarm is installed and test it with either a vacuum cleaner or a CO2 charge. Verify that there is an oil shutoff valve at the tank and perform an oil line check as previously described. If the tank is located outside the building, Verify that it is set back the required distance from property lines. Typically, a minimum of 5 feet for tanks up to 275 gallons and 10 feet for larger tanks up to 660 gallons is required. Note whether or not the tank is installed in a protective enclosure. Verify that any outside oil lines are correctly insulated. Also explain the tanks exposed to direct sunlight should be painted a light color, such as white, to minimize water buildup due to condensation. Note whether or not the tank is installed with the full secondary containment. Make sure the tank is properly secured if the area is prone to flooding. Now that the initial inspection has been completed, the inspector should write any comments on the inspection form and qualify the tank into one of three categories. The first category is acceptable for delivery, meaning that the tank appears to be in good shape and there are no apparent serious deficiencies which require attention. For example, a small amount of external corrosion is normally acceptable. But the customer should be advised that the tank is their responsibility. It should be painted periodically, and if they notice problems or oil smells, they should call their oil company immediately. The second category is acceptable for delivery after listed deficiencies are corrected, meaning that there are discrepancies which must be corrected before a delivery can be safely made. For example, the tank may be sitting on an unstable foundation and may tip over if filled. The final category is not acceptable for delivery. Tank must be replaced, meaning that the tank is in such poor shape that it is either impossible or impractical to repair it. An example might be a tank which has a leak covered with a magnet patch. Routine inspections do not have to be as comprehensive as initial inspections, but should be an integral part of every heating system tune-up. By performing these inspections on tanks that have passed the initial inspection, we are often able to detect and correct minor problems that could cause major damage if they aren't discovered. During a routine inspection, you should measure the level of oil in the tank, 
Check for water in the tank. Check the tank gauge. Make sure the tank is five feet away from the burner or other sources of flame. Although this was verified during the initial inspection, the customer may have had a water heater, dryer, or other fuel-fired appliance installed after the initial inspection was performed. Look for evidence of spills or leaks. Check the fill and vent pipes and caps and make sure that they are still positioned to avoid a buildup of water and snow. Check that the vent is free of obstructions. Check that the oil shutoff valves function properly. Make sure the oil lines are properly connected and verify that outside oil lines are insulated. And finally, check the entire system for visible leaks from the fill all the way to the burner. Once the inspection has been completed, the inspector notes whether or not the tank is still acceptable for delivery. If minor corrections are necessary, the service technician normally advises the customer of the problem and the investment required to correct it. In many cases, the defects can be quickly and inexpensively fixed. As with the initial inspection, any non-essential repairs, such as painting, are noted on the inspection form. The initial and routine inspections should be documented. Nora provides sample forms in the book Heating Oil Storage Tanks, Guide for Quality Installation and Maintenance. The pre-delivery inspection is not normally documented unless discrepancies are found. While it takes just a few moments to complete, it is very important that oil delivery personnel perform this kind of inspection before each delivery. While some of the following steps might not be possible because the tank is buried or in a basement, we recommend that you perform as many as possible to ensure that there are no obvious problems that might lead to a spill. During the pre-delivery inspection, the oil driver should verify the address. Remember that many street names are similar, North 3rd Street and South 3rd Street, or 3rd Street and 3rd Avenue. It's important to double check. Verify the tank location. If the tank isn't exactly where the delivery ticket indicates it should be, double check with the customer or your office before delivering. Check the amount of oil in the tank if possible. Check for water in the tank if possible and notify the office before delivering if water is found. Check the tank gauge if possible, both to verify that it's functioning and to be sure that it's intact. A broken gauge on an outside tank can allow water to enter the tank. Check that the tank, its supports, and foundation appear to be in good shape with no signs of leakage. Check the fill and vent pipes and their caps. Check that the fill and vent are positioned to avoid a buildup of water and snow. Verify that outside oil lines are insulated. Verify that the vent alarm functions properly. Remember, Nora recommends a no-whistle, no-fill policy. And when the delivery is complete, look carefully to be sure that no oil has spilled or is leaking. If there are minor problems, for example, a bad fill or vent cap or uninsulated outdoor oil lines, it's normally acceptable to make the delivery and notify a supervisor so that a repair can be made as soon as possible. But if there's a serious problem, if the tank is leaking, there is serious corrosion, the supports are broken, or the tank is in danger of tipping over, the delivery must be postponed until the tank can be filled safely. These are the three levels of Nora recommended tank inspection. Perform these inspections diligently and thoroughly and you'll help to preserve Oil Heat's reputation as a clean, safe and environmentally friendly source of comfort. Mm -hmm.